Hey guys, one of the most important things you can do in your career as a developer, in any career really, is stand out. When there's 10 people that are interviewing for a role, you want to be the most memorable one, even more so than the most qualified at times. And so today we're going to be talking a couple reasons as to why that is and how you can be unique and how you can stand out. And also in the past, I've talked about doing a video introduction of yourself so that when you submit it with a resume or whatever it may be, that they kind of get a feel for you. I'm gonna do a mock version of that, of what I would do if I needed a video introduction, which I've done in the past and it has worked very well. Code everything. Might I take a moment to thank our sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Go to devmountain.com if you're interested in making yourself stand out with one of the greatest coding bootcamps out there where tuition and housing is included. So you can sit down, start, and build out all the projects. Dev Mountain, uh, on a serious note, has a, a cool way that they teach you. And one of the unique things about it is you build three unique projects while you're there. And I encourage you, if you do decide to go down that route, to take full advantage of that. Don't forget to check them out at devmountain.com. So let's go ahead and talk real quick about the, the, the being unique and standing out. And some of you may say, well, Dylan, you said that the most qualified person may not get the job over the most unique person. And it doesn't mean like one is more important than the other being qualified and unique. It's like, we're gonna hire the most unique person who's super underqualified. But if you're both hovering around the same area, you want to be the guy that they remember and the guy that they think is kind of interesting. And the reason for that is a couple things. It, it communicates a couple different aspects. Um, one, uh, it lets them know that you're passionate about the field. A lot of times being unique, I don't mean being unique like, hey, that guy was kind of scary, I'll never forget him. I mean being unique like, hey, this is, um, this is I have these projects, or I have a, a YouTube channel in my case, or I have a, a uh, you know, I wrote a book, or, you know, stuff that's related to your field that makes you unique. If at the end of the day, all you have is a resume, uh, maybe a degree, and, um, you're, that, and some job experience, you're going to be like everybody else. There's not going to be anything that's going to be very uh, memorable about you. But if you, all of a sudden you have side projects, all of a sudden if you have courses you've built, um, you have social media accounts that you've built out, you have you have relevant things where maybe you host a meetup every week, you're volunteering through code.org, whatever it is, those are the things that they that are like, they kind of raise your value a little bit and also they make it so that you they remember you. And one of the things that I've done in the past and been very successful with is a video introduction. And what I mean by that is essentially I have recorded a video which I, I in it I'm not dressed in an H1Z1 shirt, but I am I am dressed as if I was going to a job interview in a clean environment. This is a green environment, but it's relatively clean. And I record a video introducing myself, talking a little bit about my experience on my, my resume, right? But they should have that. And the link to this video, I include in my cover letters and I include on my resume itself, as well as in my LinkedIn when I'm looking for work. And it's essentially an introduction to me. I want you to meet me. I want to tell you why I'm unique. And that in itself, you're already standing out above other people because now they get to see a little bit, instead of just being text and words, they're getting to experience you. And that's that's something that's gonna make you stand out and they're gonna remember. And this has worked not only with employers, but with recruiters. recruiters a recruiter's job is to sell you to somebody else. That's essentially their job at the end of the day. They say, this guy, Dylan, you know, he's, he's, he's different than the other developers. He's, he has all this sort of, you, you're giving them as much, you know, ingredients to bake the best pie, if you will, or the best cake and try and give that to somebody and say, I like that slice of cake. Let's go ahead and order one. All right. And that's the recruiters love it. And, um, the companies I've worked with have, have loved it as well. And in it, I typically will just explain some of the things that a little bit about my resume, but they should have it. But I, I typically will go over some of the stuff that makes me a little bit more unique. Projects I'm working on, um, things I'm studying that I'm not quite ready to put on the resume because I feel like I might be misleading a bit. Um, topics that I'm going to, uh, meetups I've gone to just to sort of paint a picture of me. And so 
All these things make you stand out and you can start doing this video introduction today and uh, what we're going to do in the next minute or so here is I'm going to film a mock video introduction and how if I wanted to uh, sell myself how I would do it and uh, based off where I am at at this current moment in my career. Okay, a couple things before we go and do this sort of mock introduction is some of this is going to be common sense, but I'm going to say it anyhow because some people don't have it. <laughs> so first off, you want to be in a clean environment again. Uh, if you have a bunch of noise going on because your, your baby's crying or um, someone's blaring the TV, not the best time to do it. This is essentially a professional video in the terms of you are making this you're making a video resume at the end of the day and it needs to be presented in a professional way. That doesn't mean you have to edit it. I, you, I'm not going to do any editing with it, with mine when I do these. But it does mean that you need to have a clean environment. There's not, you know, monster cans behind you on the floor. There's not, you know, uh, a cigarette ashtray behind you or whatever it is. And there's not anyone screaming or yelling in the background. And so this, if you have to go to like an office co-location space, just set up a webcam and film it in there. I highly encourage you to take the $30, $40 it is and do that if the, if it's so unrealistic that you and your home environment can have a calm, clean environment. The other thing is dress, dress as if you would for a interview and you don't know how to dress for an interview, it's uh, business professional or, or um, business casual is kind of how I would explain it. So what would define business casual? It'd be a nice collared shirt usually long sleeve. If you wanted to wear a tie, I wouldn't blame you. I, I do in mine. And then you have slacks. And uh, for the most part, they're probably not going to see your feet. So uh, I think the last time I filmed this, I filmed this, they only saw my upper body. I didn't even have pants on. Uh, so, so they don't know that. Y'all learned a little something today. Uh, so um, just, you know, dress, dress nice. Dress as if you were showing up for the interview. And another thing to consider is plan out what you're going to say, right? Uh, the worst thing that you can do is sort of fumble your way through this. It's okay a little bit because everyone understands that you're probably not a video god or anything like that, but know what you want to say. Know what, what you want to make them understand as to how you stand out above the rest, how you are unique. And so to do that, just sort of in your head, you know, in your head rehearse and then when you're actually filming it you may not get it on the first or second try but go ahead and you know film a couple of them and choose the one that you think represents what you're trying to get across uh to them so with that being said let's go ahead and get started with my video introduction hi my name is dylan israel i just want to thank you for watching this video real quick and just introduce myself a little bit what i'm about a little bit of my experience as well as how i'm trying to progress as a developer which i think is just as important as to where i am today as i will be tomorrow so uh just a little bit about my history my work experience i, I got into the space uh, when I was doing my first internship at a web dev company that focused a little bit on WordPress, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And from there, I started taking some freelance clients through them. I eventually landed at a student information systems company um, called Education Dynamics. And what they, they're essentially a Blackboard or a Moodle. And there I was in a technology trainer role, which was a, a mix between a technical writer and a project manager. I, I would do things like uh, create user stories, write down acceptance criteria, do mock-ups, as well as create release notes and uh, training materials for the field of about a thousand uh, teachers. Now, from there, I ended up uh, moving to Florida. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, and I uh, it's about 2,800 mile drives, quite, quite the trip. Uh, but I accepted a full stack role at a military training company, contracting company, and uh, they specialize in running training events for uh, the uh, DOD and things like that. And what I was doing was I was doing greenfield development. They essentially started a startup in the software space. They had an existing business. And so there's about three or four of us on a small team building out the Epic platform, which is a series of training tools and, and analytics tools to help be able to provide feedback on how the training processes went as well as can improve upon. I was there about a year before I accepted a role at my current uh, work, 
which is it works global which is a multi-level marketing company and from there i've been doing front-end development in angular 2 plus um, obviously html css javascript my previous role i was doing angular js and php and mysql uh, here I'm doing Angular 2, and we do test-driven development, so we're using Karma and Jasmine for our testing suite. And I'm uh, ch currently transitioning to a full-stack role there. They've asked me to uh, if I was interested in um, learning C Sharp and .NET and SQL, which is the, the back end. And I'm always interested in learning everything, so I, of course, said yes, and I'm progressing. A little bit about what I'm doing outside of work is I'm currently doing my software engineering degree online, uh, which I should be done within by the end of the year at the current rate that I'm going. I do a lot of studying outside of work. I've done a free code camps front end certificate, which is a 500 hour online boot camp that focused on HTML, CSS, jQuery, as well as their back end certificate, which is Node Express and MongoDB. It's just something to learn and something to progress. I'm always trying to do that. That's one of my main goals. I have a YouTube channel as well. That's uh, something a little bit unique about me is as I was learning, I kind of documented my journey. And now, uh, as of today, I have about 10 million minutes watched on the channel. And I'm, it's been a, quite a passion project of mine. It's something I continue to do in the future. I do tutorials on there, anything in AngularJS, jQuery, React, Angular 2 and uh, Node, Express, MongoDB, whatever it is I'm studying at the current time, and whatever projects, so it, may, it may be a project tutorial, it may be a topic-oriented tutorial talking about skills to learn for fr front-end uh, development in 2018, for instance. It's, a, it's sort of an infotainment channel as well as a tutorial channel all compiled into one. I also am writing a book, uh, which will probably be out by the end of this year, sort of collecting my thoughts. I have about 700 videos on there on the channel, which is quite a bit, and collecting my thoughts from those topics into a single source, single source to maybe elaborate in a, in a text way with a little bit more detail than you can in a video, free-forming video. I go to meetups about once a month. The, the most recent one I went was thrown by Suncoast JS, which is an awesome organization that has been putting on meetups in the Tampa Bay area for quite some time. And it was about Ethereum contracts and then uh, Node.js and uh, reactive components, which is uh, the Ethereum contracting was very interesting to kind of see something uh, that you hear so much about. Uh, another, another thing about me is I volunteer on occasion through code.org, which is a great organization that's mission and goal is to spread essentially the STEM to younger demographics and get people involved at a younger age uh, in involved in engineering of all, of all sorts. And uh, the most recent time I did it was for the Florida Great American Teaching. It was about two weeks after I moved down here, uh, moved down to Florida. And uh, I went and talked to a bunch of young children in the elementary school for about three hours, about seven classes or so, and uh, answered their questions as well as kind of talked about what I actually do. And uh, all they really wanted to know about me was, did I code Minecraft? how to build mods in Minecraft, and how much money I make. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a great experience, and hopefully I provided some value. I, uh, I also do Udemy courses. I've built courses uh, on there in Angular. I have several in development right now, about three, uh, which will be released about one a month uh, moving forward. And uh, I uh, do courses on there and whatever it is I'm learning. I uh, currently am working my way through a 28-hour Angular 2 course even though I've been working in Angular for several months, it is uh, there's always bits and pieces of things you didn't know existed, and uh, it's always good to expand your knowledge and try to focus on that. So that's a little bit about me. I uh, I'm just uh, a little on, on a more personal level. I uh, I've been in Florida about a year and a half. I'm loving it. Uh, my I have three cats and looking to get a dog. So I'm a big animal person. And I'm really just a, sort of a, a dork that likes to code all the time. Uh, so that, that's a little bit about me. I appreciate you watching this video. And of course, if you have any questions for me, um, there will be my info on the resume, as well as in the description of this video, my email and contact information. And I'm, I'm happy to answer that. It. And so thank you again. Bye. So I think that was a, a pretty decent video introduction. There are some things that I would change about it. One, I typically try to get it around five minutes. I think we went about six on that. Another thing is I probably would dove into free code camp front end certificate. I would have said something along the lines of, 
Uh, you know, it's a five hundred. It's an open source online boot camp. Five hundred hours of estimated coursework. It covers these technologies. I built these ten projects with these thirty algorithms. I might talk a little bit about my code fights. How I practice algorithms there. I did about a hundred just as something to get better. Just something to show that I'm always learning. Those would be the things that I would improve upon in this video. Now everyone's going to be different. Uh, one thing that I would probably try and talk about, and this may be one of my shortcomings, is I would. I focus a little bit on team collaboration, working with other people. Uh, it's something that I, I lack a little bit in my side projects. I like to work alone on my side projects because I like to go at my own pace with them and 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 make the decisions about them. Uh, but if you have something like that, I would elaborate on that. But uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, join our Facebook group, check out my course, get the bro you don't know code shirt. We got a bunch of shit we're trying to sell here, all right? Got to pay the bills. But uh, anyhow, guys, um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please share the videos. Those That helps grow the channel more than anything else is sharing the videos to your friends and family who would like this sort of content. But, you know. Uh, that's my spiel. See you next time. Bye. Hey guys, if you're looking for a fun little project to do, I have my very first course out called Learn Angular by Projects Part 1, where we build a personal portfolio. It's about three hours of content. It's one project. It's not going to teach you everything in Angular by any means, but it's a great way to get your feet wet. You can go ahead and check the link down below, get a, a coupon code, Coding God, or just click the icon.